Hello everyone, in today's video we're going to be showing you how you can use the built-in EFB to quickly make flight plans. So first things first, so open up the EFB here, and if uh, you're hitting it for the first time, you might have a screen that basically kind of looks like this. We're going to head over to the flight planner at the top, just like that, and you can see that we've got a flight kind of ready to go and everything good. So I'm actually going to go ahead and reset our flight plan so you can kind of see everything in action. Now there's a lot of different ways you can design flights. You can enter waypoints manually, or if you're lazy like me, you can basically enter everything directly in the map itself. So what I'm going to do here is I'm just going to click twice, and it's going to go ahead and open up a little map here that looks like this. Now, this is roughly a chart, roughly a map, in the sense that it has a lot of the different components that you're probably familiar with. And there's a lot of ways to actually customize this display. Uh, one of the things I will do to help us out a little bit there, I'll go and grab that. I'm actually going to pop the display out. If you wonder why I did that, it's so I can go like this, and I can make it nice and big so it's easy for you folks to see at home. Now, this map is completely interactable. Uh, I don't think that's the word. Interactive is probably the word I was going for. But the reason I bring that up is, let's say, I want to make a plan here. I can actually come to an airport, left click on it, and then I can actually do things and actually add these things directly. So if I hit add to the flight plan, I can say, oh, I want that to be my departure point, just like that. Now let's say I want to go to a motel over here. I can actually click on this. I could go ahead and say add to waypoint as a waypoint. So now you can see that I'm going directly from Bradley up to motel. That's pretty handy. Let's say from motel, I want to go over to, uh, let's see here, what kind of a fun is that? Let's go to Westover here today. Come over here to Westover add flight plan, and I can set this as my arrival. So you can see instantaneously, I can very, very, very rapidly dial in the different components of my actual flight, just like that. Now, the thing you're probably wondering is, ah, oh, this is really crowded. Is there any way that I can make this a little bit easier to work with? Well, there are ways to do that. One thing you can do is if you come down here under map settings, you can actually adjust the different modes. For example, if I want it on default mode, if I swing back here, you'll see everything's got this kind of like white kind of vibe to it, which makes it a little bright for me. If you switch it to satellite mode and come back, you can actually see a satellite image of everything that you're actually going to be going through. Now, I'm a huge fan of terrain highlight. I just find that kind of the easiest way to do it. But there's another thing on here that's really helpful. There's a navigation page. The reason I like this is you can actually use this as a way to tune what you want to look at. Let's say, for example, I don't want waypoints. Let's say I don't want airspace. Let's say I don't want traffic. I don't want this. I just want airports. If I were to go back to my main page now, I'm only looking at the airports. Now, this is all fine, and uh, it's really, really good. And the other thing, too, is if you get really lost, you can actually type in the name of something. I'll pick Manchester, for example, here. I'll pick Manchester, New Hampshire. And you can use this as a way, basically, to try to identify different components for it. Again, if I want to set the radio frequencies, I got them down the right there like that. But it's just sort of a handy little way to basically jump in. And you can actually notice here is if I click this button right here on the left, it'll open up all sorts of different layers and approaches and all that other stuff. Off, which is handy. But let's say we're just keeping it simple and uh, we just sort of right clicked our way, or I should say left clicked our way to victory on our flight. But you still really, really want to be able to dial in the specific runway that you want to land on here. Okay, right now it's set to runway five. Maybe we don't want runway five today. One of the things you can do is if we go back up to the actual airport, the destination, press the more info button, you can actually come into the runways option. You can see all the different available runways. So for example, let's say I would take a look at runway 33 here. I can hit that. It'll give me all the critical data Data that we need. It'll tell me where it is. Again, there's no wind today, so you can pick any runway you want. It doesn't matter. But the thing that's so cool is if you swing over here on the left where this little kind of map icon is, you can actually come in here, select approach, and you can actually pick a specific runway. That was actually set to Manchester, not oh, Westover. Thank you. So what I'll do here is I'll come in here and I can actually click this and you can get the actual diagram here to see exactly what it looks like, which is absolutely wild. So if I press up runway five here, I can actually press this button right here and add it directly to my route. So if I were to actually back up, we've now added all those critical details here. I'm actually going to collapse this a little bit so you can see how everything is all down here. You can see our runways down here. Again, if we want to add the approach, we can pick the one we want. Direct, change procedure, and you can see everything is all highlighted and instantly added. So now if I were to go back to my map, you can see we've got it all there. And it just makes it so much simpler to work. Now, the last kicker here, and this is the tricky one, is how do we send this information over to our G1000? Now, that's actually easier said than done, because what I'm going to do is now that I've got everything the way I like it, I'm going to come up to my top page, click Send, and you can send it right to the ATC and the avionics, 
to the ATC or just the avionics. So for me, I'm going to set it to both. And if I go ahead and close that, which you'll observe, i got to close both screens, is the fact that our avionics actually updated themselves instantly. Now, the cool thing here, and you're probably going to notice this very quickly, is the fact that this does not agree with what we did. And if I come back over here real quickly like this, you can see how Motel definitely does not align with those two components. As a matter of fact, if I open up the flight plan page, let's go ahead and flight plan real quickly here, you can see that there's one heck of a, you know, kind of a split here because we haven't actually told the system how to get from here to here. Now, the crazy thing is, if we wanted to be silly, is we could actually come in here, right click, come down here like this, and we could actually try to link these two up by picking a waypoint that actually exists between them. The other thing we could do too is if we just want to go right to approach mode, we could actually hit the approach and actually activate it directly if that's something that we want to do. It's just one of those things you have to kind of watch out for that even though it made it that quick and easy to build, once we pop that approach in there, things got a little bit more complicated. One of the cool things too is if we were to pop the screen back up here and say, oh no, that's not what I wanted to do. Reset, 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 reset. If you send it back to the avionics, just kind of a quick tip. You can see it actually deletes everything out of it as well. Enjoy.